Hey guys, what's happening? So Niat the Noble here, explainer of films and comics, eater of chips, warden of knowledge. And today, we'll be taking a look at the Three-Eyed Raven as featured in the Game of Thrones series. I'm issuing out a spoiler alert as I'll be discussing everything that has happened in the TV series up until now, so if you're not caught up, maybe don't watch this video. And perhaps indulge yourself in my videos on the White Walkers and the Grayscale Virus instead, which I've covered in the past and will be leaving links to below. Now, the moniker of the Three-Eyed Raven doesn't actually refer to a specific person and is more like a title or role that many people have adopted throughout the history of Westeros, dating back to the arrival of the First Men. All that we know about the original Three-Eyed Raven was that he was the last green seer appointed by the Children of the Forest that had the ability to both walk and use the green sight, a unique power that granted its user the ability to perceive the past, present and future through prophetic visions. In order for us to fully understand the Three-Eyed Raven, we have to take a look at Brendan Rivers, the incarnation of the Raven that had held the mantle for the longest period as featured in the Game of Thrones series. I think it's also worth considering that Rivers had extended his lifespan to well over a hundred years by merging himself with the Weirwood Tree. This also allowed him to use his green sight and walking abilities for days, weeks and even years without breaking focus. The character is by all respects a walking, talking encyclopedia of all that has been and all that will be in Westeros. And as a memory of mankind's collective actions throughout time, the Night King had sought to defeat the Three-Eyed Raven to assist his plan of wiping out the human race. While the Three-Eyed Raven possessed this unique role, it must be noted that he wasn't the only person with green sight, as a number of people in the series have been seen with the ability to glimpse into their past, present and future, including Rickon Stark and Jojen Reed, though they both didn't appear to have Rivers and Bran's walking abilities. I came to see Father. How many times have I told you he's in King's Landing with Sansa and Arya? He was down here. I saw him. Saw him when? Last night. When I was sleeping. Early on in the series, Brandon Stark experiences a vision of his father in the crypts of Winterfell, around about the same time that Eddard Stark was being executed at King's Landing. His younger brother Rickon also experiences a similar vision, and Jojen Reed later explained to Bran that this was the green sight, and that he'd also seen a vision of his father passing. In the Song of Ice and Fire novels, Greensight seems to be limited to people who are blood of the First Men and the Free Folk. This may have some connection with the fact that the First Men lived in Westeros for centuries alongside the magical children of the forest, and they'd even adopted their religion of the old gods of the forest. Other people across the world, however, do claim to have their own various means of experiencing visions of the past, present and future. For example, the Warlocks of Karth had similar abilities, particularly their leadership known as the Undying. The Red Priest of Rolor, the Lord of Light, which included people such as Melisandre, claimed to receive ecstatic visions from communion with their flames. And of course, members of the Targaryen bloodline were also known to frequently experience prophetic dreams. In fact, it was due to a prophetic dream that the Targaryen survived the Doom of Valeria in the first place. Brendan Rivers, also known as Lord Bloodraven, was essentially the bastard son of King Aegon Targaryen IV, also known as Aegon the Unworthy, and Melissa Blackwood of the First Men. Being of both First Men and Valerian descent, Rivers was gifted with mastery of both greensight and magic. His father Aegon was known to have had little honour, and was rumoured to have had dozens of children, six of which came from noble mothers, including Rivers himself, giving them all the title of the Great Bastards. They were all so happy. So are you, Rivers. <laughs> it is time to go. Please, a little longer. <sighs> of all the people in Westeros, I think there is no one that has had a more complex and complicated life than Rivers, with the exception of the Night King and Melisandre, as throughout the years, Brynden Rivers went from being a bastard child of nobility to a legitimized child of the king along with his five siblings. The final act of Aegon the Unworthy that would later start an ongoing civil war for the right to sit on the Iron Throne, a recurring theme throughout the history of Westeros. Now, after the death of his brother Daron Targaryen, who was the heir to Aegon's throne, Daron's son appointed his uncle Rivers as the right hand of the king. He was then a member of the Night's Watch, sent there as punishment, as many often were, and within a few years became the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Soon after this, Rivers ventured north of the Wall and was never to be heard or seen from again in many decades, until he contacted Brandon Stark as the Three-Eyed Raven. Brendan Rivers was an exceptional warrior that wielded the Valerian Steel Longsword Dark Sister, and he was also an excellent bowman, wielding a wearwood longbow with such proficiency that he would later become the leader of an elite group of archers known as the Raven's Teeth, which also served as his bodyguards. 
So gifted was he in strategy that he was responsible for the victory of his armies in the Blackfire Rebellion that saw two of the great bastards, Aegon Rivers and Daemon Blackfire, attempt to usurp the throne. It should also be noted that his victory during the First Rebellion was due to him personally slaying his brother Aegon and his two sons in a sea of arrows with the help of the Raven's Teeth. In addition to his military prowess, Rivers was also a very powerful sorcerer and necromancer that had excellent skills in espionage, a trait adopted from his ancient bloodlines. In George R.R. Martin's prequel novellas, Tales of Duncan Egg, about the eventual King Aegon V's travels as a young boy with a hedge knight to Duncan the Tall, Bloodraven is an important character in terms of his presence in the world and is one who is discussed far more than he's actually seen. In The Mystery Knight, the third book in the prequel series, Sir Duncan thinks to himself, How many eyes does Lord Bloodraven have? A thousand eyes and one. Some claim the King's Hand was a student of the dark arts who could change his face, put on the likeness of a one-eyed dog, and even turn to mist. Packs of gaunt grey wolves hunted down his foes, men said, and carrying crows spied for him and whispered secrets in his ear. Most of the tales were only tales, Dunk did not doubt, but no one could doubt that Bloodraven had informers everywhere. Here it's pretty evident that Rivers was a master of secrets, and his ability to see and know everything which helped him rule the kingdom was one of the first clues that we got about his greenside ability. During his time as the Hand of the King, he'd ruled the kingdom with his spies and spells as Lord Bloodraven, a name given to him due to his albino skin, long white hair, startling red eyes, and a birthmark that looked like a raven drawn in blood that ran across his right cheek down towards his throat. His actions within this role, especially after the death of his king, including the slaying of his other nephew, Aenys Blackfire, after offering him safe passage into King's Landing to attend the Great Council and put forth his claim to the throne in person, only to have him executed, left the new king, Aegon Targaryen V, no choice but to arrest his uncle Brendan. Though Rivers would essentially argue that he'd sacrificed his honour for the good of the realm, King Aegon refused to set him free and basically gave him the choice of either dying by execution or taking up the black by joining the Night's Watch. Accompanied by Aemon Targaryen, his other nephew, who was actually offered the throne and gave it up to become a maester of the Night's Watch, Brendan then sailed for the Wall in the year 233 AC. It's no surprise then that a mere six years after his arrival, he was appointed the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Though he would lead the men of the Night's Watch with honour for the years to come, the Lord Commander eventually disappeared while ranging beyond the Wall, and whilst there is no information of where he went and what he was up to during this period, I believe that the Three-Eyed Raven had called for him and began training him to become his successor, as Brendan himself would eventually train Brandon Stark many years later. That's my father. The man beside him is Howland Reed, Mira's father. The form he takes when he appears to Bran is that of Brendan Rivers as he would have been roughly around the same time that he'd been the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. We know this because when Bran actually meets him in person, he is much older, and his body appears to have merged and twisted along with the roots of the sacred weirwood tree. As a walking encyclopedia filled with knowledge and as a green seer, the Three-Eyed Raven would often look into the past with Bran to show him important moments in the history of Westeros to better help Bran understand his role in the world and the wars to come. Brandon, who has now taken on the moniker of the Three-Eyed Raven, is just the next in a long line of information gatherers that through their greenside ability have access to the history of Westeros, which is the reason the Night King was after him, as Bran had seen his creation in the past and continued to spy on him, discovering his weaknesses and tactics in the process. Granted, the Night King did have control over ice, and Daenerys has control over fire-breathing dragons, but Bran, now as the Three-Eyed Raven, is arguably the most powerful character in all of Westeros, especially considering the Children of the Forest and Melisandre have now all passed, along with the Night King himself. Just as Rivers had used his ability to travel through time and communicate the Bran of his role in the coming future, so too did Bran, who'd gone back to specific points in time that were crucial to safeguarding the future, from his walking into Willis, leading to his transformation into Hodor as a gentle giant whose role it was to take care of Bran and inevitably die holding a door for him, to his request for aid to Benjen Stark, who rode in to save Bran and Mira from the whites that pursued them. Why did you help us? Three-Eyed Raven sent for me. Three-Eyed Raven's dead. Now he lives again. 
I think it's also likely that he'd walked into his younger self and explained that Arya needed to possess the cat's ball dagger, as while the past brand had no idea of why she needed it, as seen through this confused look he had when he was handing it to her. Given that the message had come from his future self, he was certain that he needed to give it to her. And considering she used that very dagger to bring down the Night King with the help of her stealthy assassin skills perfected by her tutelage under the guidance of the faceless men, I'm certain that Bran had seen this future play out with his greenside gift. After all, it was he who volunteered to be the bait for the Night King, and when he walked while Theon was protecting him, I think that he was actually going back in time to make sure his past and present self were prepared for that future. He also thanks Theon just as he's about to apologize for all that he'd done to the Starks in the past and reassures him that all of his actions had led him here, which is exactly where they needed to be in order to defeat the Night King, which they were able to do with the help of a girl who was ambidextrous. <laughs> With that being said, the job of the Three-Eyed Raven is not ended, as he still has the role of cataloguing everything that has happened and everything that will happen. And even after the thrilling conclusion of the series in the final episodes, the Three-Eyed Raven will continue on, either through Bran or through another gifted person with the green sight. I mean, Bran is seen into the future, so it's likely that he's already met his replacement and has probably begun training them, whoever they may be. You're Lord of Winterfell now. I can never be Lord of Winterfell. I can never be Lord of anything, and the Three-Eyed Raven. Well, that's all for today, folks. A big thanks to all of you guys who requested we explore the Three-Eyed Raven as featured in the Game of Thrones series. I know that a lot of you guys have asked about the music in my videos, so I thought I might let you know that I've had a subscription to Epidemic Sound for the past two years, which is essentially an online database featuring thousands of composed tracks and soundscapes that you can choose from. They're currently offering a free 30-day trial which you can access with the link I've left below. So, if you're a budding YouTuber, editor, or filmmaker that needs some quality music, I highly recommend that you check them out. Do you know who this belonged to? No. That very question was what started the War of the Five Kings. In a way, that dagger made you what you are today. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Sydney at the Noble here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Take me back there, I want to go back. No. Stay too long where you don't belong and you will never return. Why do I want to return? So I can be a cripple again? You won't be here forever. You won't be an old man in a tree, but before you leave, you must learn. Learn what? Everything.